What is going on you guys, A20 Mayo here, and in today's video on the DG YouTube channel, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play Malusi. There are going to be a lot of key parts in this video, especially with her rework coming up very soon. We're going to be talking about Malusi's playstyle, her best loadout, and where and when to place her Banshees. So with all of that being said, let's jump into the Malusi guide. So as everyone knows, Malusi is a 3-speed 1-armor defender, and arguably one of the most impactful operators just in general for every single round, just because of how much stuff she can really do. But with Malusi, you have the option as the primary weapon between the MP5 and the Super 90. Personally, I run the MP5 with muzzle break. The gun really doesn't have that much recoil, so I really leave it up to you. My advice for your attachment, though, would be between flash hider and muzzle break. And then the RG15 is her only secondary muzzle break on this, pretty much for any DMR or pistol. And then lastly, her secondary piece of utility, Nitrile Cellar Impact, and we will definitely be going over these two pieces of secondary utility and how you should use them and when to bring them. So firstly, what I want to talk about in this video is the fact that Malusi is getting reworked and how significant this is going to be for her. So if you guys have not heard already, Malusi's Banshee is going to be getting a little bit of a change. So it's going to be pretty much very similar to what it is now in the current season. But next season in North Star and from here on out, the Banshee, when it's placed, will be closed. And then once an attacker walks into the proximity of the Banshee, it will open up, allowing an attacker to shoot it. So you don't have to melee it or use any explosive on it anymore. It can be shot when it opens up in the proximity. So that is a very, very big change coming to Malusi, and it is going to change a lot with how you place your Banshees. You're not really going to be able to just place it in an open area like you have been before. You're actually going to have to think about how you're going to place the Malusi, and some very crucial things to take note on when you are playing this operator. So now I want to talk about the different ways that you should be approaching Malusi and when you're placing down her Banshees. So with Banshees, it's pretty similar to barbed wire. You're going to want to be placing these things on choke points, window jump-ins, possibly even areas of the map where a hard breach is going to be placed, or in areas of the map where a reinforced wall will be opened. Your main focus when playing Malusi is trying to maximize her Banshees whenever you do place them. Now to kind of take that a step further when you're playing Malusi, you want to try to place them in pretty much annoying places that's the biggest kind of thing i guess you could say with playing malusi is placing them in pretty annoying areas of the map where it makes it very difficult for an attacker to reach okay so now that we're in game i really want to talk about the different ways that you should be placing malusis and how to maximize the banshee when you do place them so with the old version of Malusi, what you were able to do is pretty much just walk up to any area of the map place on the malusi and then you can set it and forget it kind of piece of utility so with the rework that Malusi is going to be seeing, placing the Banshee in an area like this, where when an attacker walks into the proximity of it and they want to shoot it, they have to look all the way from wherever they're pre-aiming over here and all the way to the left there. So that's a huge thing when you are placing Malusi's, is really trying to force the attacker's crosshair placement into an area of the map where it pretty much lines you up a freebie. Now another thing to pay attention to is the actual proximity of the Malusi itself. So as you guys saw, when I do place a Malusi down, there's kind of like this proximity effect that shows what the actual proximity of the Banshee is when it might be uh, triggered. So you don't want to place a Banshee so close to an area of the map where an attacker can just walk into it, shoot it from cover, and then they get the Banshee scot-free. And the example that I'm using here is, if there's ever a pixel shield which is commonly placed, then as an attacker might want to walk into piano, they're going to have to take their crosshair from pixel all the way down here to the Banshee to shoot it. And if the attacker wants to stick through the gunfight in the Malusi, slowing them down, it's a win-win situation for you because they're being slowed or you're taking your, their crosshair placement from wherever they're looking down to the Banshee itself. Now, another thing you can do when playing Malusi is placing her Banshees in an area of the map, more specifically a hallway, where it allows you to swing off of the Banshee being triggered. So in Coastline, for example, the long 90 hallway leading to VIP door. If you place a Malusi in that hallway, wait for an attacker to trigger it, then you play Vase, or Billard's Double Door, and pretty much be ready for the swing, it allows you to line up a little bit more of an easier kill. Now, one other thing that you can do with Malusi in combination with a Nitro Cell is place a Banshee in an area, possibly on a default plant location like this here on CEO. Go below, and now that we're in piano, we can pre-place our Nitro Cell, rotate back upstairs, and then once we hear the audio cue of the Banshee being activated, we can blow our Nitro Cell denying the default plant. You can also use this combination on other soft surfaces and pre-place the nitro cell. It doesn't only have to be for the default plant. Now, another huge thing that I see a lot of people miss out on when they are playing Malusi is they don't call out their Malusi placement to their teammates. Guys, this is a huge thing that all of you guys need to start doing today or the next time you play Malusi. 
It's very important that your teammates know where your Malusis are placed just as much as you do. Because if they hear one getting activated on the other side of the map, they might not know exactly where it's at, be confused off the audio cues, and it might get them killed. So the next time you're playing Malusi, seriously, you need to call out, hey, there's a Malusi on white stairs, hey, there's one on this doorway, and there's one on this window jump in. Very, very important that this information is being relayed to your other teammates. Now, another cool change coming with the Malusi rework is the fact that feet will now activate the Banshee. Yes, the Banshee now has a foot fetish. I know, it's crazy. But something really neat that you can do with this is actually make footholds on a wall like this, place a Banshee on the other side of the wall, and then the Banshee will activate if an attacker ever does walk along side of the wall there and as you can see here as i place the malusi down and you can see the proximity of it it most definitely will go through the wall if an attacker ever does walk into the proximity on the other side of the wall now the reason this is so impactful is because it forces the attacker to go prone making their positioning very predictable now i want to talk about the different ways that you could be playing malusi herself and this is going to be the conversation of roaming versus anchoring now with anchoring with malusi it's pretty much the same as any other operator on the defensive side but there might be a little bit more of a difference here where you might want to be a little bit more reactive off of the banshees itself and possibly playing more aggressive I'm not saying you have to go around swinging everything, but the information and the slowing effect of the Banshee is a great help for taking gunfights. Now, if you do decide to roam with Malusi, something that you could do is bring a Banshee with you if your team allows it in terms of utility on the bomb site. If there's enough utility on the bomb site and the Banshee isn't really needed in a location, then you can take that Banshee with you, place it in a hotspot area where it can not only give you information on said area, but also allow you to play off of it a little bit more aggressive. That little piece of information and help from that Banshee can really go a long way in helping you play that position. Also, speaking of roaming, I want to bring up the conversation of impacts versus Nitro Cell on Malusi. If you're someone who wants to anchor quite a bit when playing this operator, I suggest you just bring the Nitro Cell. Since you're on the bomb site pretty much waiting for the site execute from the attackers, your Nitro Cell can be a great impact on how the round plays out in terms of denying plant. Now a situation that might play out when you're anchoring is that you don't have any shotguns on your defense. This might be a situation where you want to bring the impact grenades for those rotates. Setting up rotates on the bomb site is very important for allowing you to play the bomb site the best that you can as a defender. Now if you're someone who wants to roam, this decision becomes a little easier. Depending on how you're wanting to roam, whether it's a shallow roam or a deep roam, bringing the, nitro, bringing the nitro cell on the shallow roam might be your better option, since you're going to be closer to the bomb site and probably going to be rotating back to the bomb site sooner than a deep roam. And a shallow roam is pretty much when you're closer to the bomb site and you're pretty much there to shoot a couple drones, maybe take a gunfight, that's really pushing it, and then you'll just rotate back. But if you're wanting to go on a deep roam, then impacts might be better for you since you might be caught in a situation where you need to make a rotate fast or drop through a hatch, allowing you to escape whatever pressure you're feeling from the attackers. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I have for the Malusi guide. If you guys enjoyed or learned anything new, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the Disrupt Gaming channel. It really means a lot to us and it also helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And I also want to mention again before I go that you guys can get access to exclusive sub badges, exclusive emotes, as well as two high quality Rainbow Six Siege backgrounds each month. Also, if you guys are wanting the Disrupt Gaming weapon skin for the L85 for Thatcher and Sledge, you can find it by going to the shop tab, scrolling down to the bottom, and clicking the esports button. But with all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something new, and I will see you guys in the next video.